Hi guys, this week's episode covers a topic that it's absolutely critical to understand if you're going to succeed in algo trading. Ironically, it's also a subject that is very often misunderstood. I'm going to be looking in quite a bit of detail at the subject of price data and looking at this in the context of both backtesting and also live trading. You see, one of the keys to developing an algo system where the results you receive in backtesting are truly indicative of what you could expect in live trading is making sure that you unify the behaviour between the two from a data perspective. As I said before, because this isn't always fully understood and the necessary steps aren't taken to ensure there is common behaviour between the two scenarios, it means that traders often get completely different results when they trade a system live compared to the results that they observed in their own backtesting. So let's start to uncover the reasons for this and make a start. So we're going to consider how price data modelling needs to be used to help obtain backtest results that are truly indicative of what you could expect if you put the system into a live trading account. Otherwise, what's the point of doing backtesting, right? So let's make a start. There are two factors that determine the mode of operation for price data. The first is the delivery of ticks to the algo or the expert advisor. Now, of course, the ticks can be delivered either in a real-time trading context. So, for example, from a price feed from an MT5 server through the client and then finally delivery to the expert advisor. But also in a backtesting context. So, for example, from the MT5 strategy tester being delivered to the EA. Now, the second factor that determines the mode of operation of price data is any coded mechanisms within the algo or the EA, which determine whether or not a tick that's been delivered is actually processed. Now, without any price controlling code in the EA, the default operation is that every tick that's delivered to the EA will be processed. Now, there's a number of considerations that every algo trader has to make a decision around. The first is the choice of price feed model for backtesting. And of course, this must match the trading system characteristics that are being tested. So, for example, the use of M1 data is no good for any system that's approaching um, a high frequency trading model or a scalping time sensitive or price sensitive system. Tick data would obviously be the right choice for these types of systems. However, tick data is often overkill for longer duration systems such as swing trading systems. The second consideration is unifying behaviour across backtesting and real time trading. So the EA or the algo must behave in a like for like way across both of these contexts. Otherwise, the backtest results will not be indicative of the expected live results. When you don't have this like for like behavior, this invalidates the whole backtesting process. The third consideration in relation to data is minimizing computing resources. So, for example, if you don't use tick data, then you will clearly get faster backtests. Furthermore, depending on how you control the price feed in code in your EA, this will determine how big the VMs are that you have to run your systems on. And of course, by reducing VM computing, that will also reduce your costs. But the focus of this presentation is on number two which is the unification of the behaviour between backtesting and real-time trading. And in order to do this, this requires price data controlling code within your algo whenever you're using M1 data. 
To help illustrate what I mean by unifying behaviour, it's probably helpful to show an example of what the problem actually is from a live chart. So in this example I've used the M1 timeframe so that the issue plays out quickly on the video, but exactly the same issue applies to any time frame. So I want you to focus your attention on the blue line of the stochastic indicator in the lower section of the screen. As you can see, this is currently above the 20 level. You can ignore the red line, this is just the signal line. Now let's imagine that we're looking for an oversold condition as part of a mean reversion system. And we have a rule that opens a long trade when the stochastic indicator falls below the level of 20, which you can see it now has done. But let's just continue watching to see what happens next. So you can see now that the indicator has receded and the stochastic is now above the 20 level again. Then a new bar is created and the stochastic line itself doesn't show any evidence at this point that it was ever actually below the line. Price data then falls again and we get a further dip below the 20 level. So if the first condition was missed for any reason, then this would have been a second opportunity to get into the trade. Now let's fast forward a little to the next bar. And here we can see that the price continues up and so does the stochastic. So as I said before, this kind of behaviour can be seen in any time frame. So let's consider what this really means. If you'd used an open prices only model in your backtesting, no trade would have opened because the chart shows no evidence that the stochastic ever crossed the 20 level. However, if this occurred when you were trading the system in a live account and you didn't have any code to control price behaviour, then your algo would have processed every tick. And so as you saw, the 20 level was crossed and would have seen a trade open. So straight away, we have a difference between backtest behaviour and live behaviour. And this is why we need code to unify the behaviour between the two scenarios. Otherwise, what's the point of backtesting if the results are going to be so different? And just one more point on this. This behaviour does not mean that the use of open prices is bad. On the contrary, with code in your EA to control data processing, this model actually means your backtest will more closely represent live trading expectations than any other model, including the use of tick data. But only if your algo implements that code. So click top right now to go to part two, where we'll look into this in a lot more detail.